So when you don't know what you don't know. And so regardless of what sector you're working in, what product or service you're offering, at some point in developing your marketing strategy, you're going to have to figure out what is it that your end user is valuing about your offering. And so that brings up the question, how do you go about figuring that out, figuring out what you don't know when you don't know it? What is the scope that that can encompass? And this is a challenge that's faced by almost all of our clients in marketing at some point along you know, figuring out what is their uh, marketing strategy. And so currently, I, I think the options that clients have is this trade-off between going the quantitative route or the qualitative route. When you go the quantitative route, the benefit is it's scalable. So this means you can talk to a lot of consumers across segments and across markets. But the challenge with the traditional quantitative approach is that the structure means that as the marketers, you have to decide what you think might be important to your, to your consumer. You put that in front of them, but you can only get feedback on those specific factors. So the risk here becomes if you miss the attributes that are actually driving the behavior, you're misspending your marketing dollars. So then the other option is to go the qualitative route. The benefit, of course, of qualitative is it's a little bit more open-ended, so you don't, there's not that large risk of missing um, you know, the most important attribute. But we still have to remember that we have interviewers who are conducting that qualitative research, and their own biases and expectations are still going to kind of direct the conversation and direct the insights. Assuming you have perfectly objective uh, moderators, and that's not going to happen, you know, the other challenge is that when you're doing qualitative, it's not quite scalable. And so the risk here becomes you have to extrapolate from really large, small sample size to larger sample sizes. And again, this is a risky way to spend your marketing dollars. So what we've done is, sorry, not there yet. Um, I, I think the current innovation in this space is scalable qual because it has the scale and it has the open-endedness. But I don't think the problem is quite resolved yet. And the reason for that is whether we're talking about the scalable qual, whether we're talking about traditional qual or traditional quant, mostly these are resting on explicit measures. So directly asking people, what is it that you value? What's important to you about this offering? And what we know from behavioral sciences, and I'm sure you've heard a lot about today or will at this conference, um, it's not very easy for people to, one, access what's actually important to them or to actually communicate that to us. So what we've developed is called the attribute elicitation task. And essentially, this task is scalable. So what that means is that we don't have to risk extrapolating from small to large uh, markets. It's, it's structured in terms of the task, which means we don't have the, the risk of the interviewer kind of directing or biasing the research, but it's open-ended in terms of the responses we get back. And what that means is that the respondents are able to tell us what's important to them rather than doing that the other way around. And finally, we use an implicit measure that gets over the traditional rationalizations we get when we're using direct line inquiry. So I'll very quickly take you through what this um, method looks like. It's, uh, it's uh, operationalized in four stages. So in the first, all we do is offer the, uh, pr sorry, present them with three products. And we're just asking them to decide which two of these are similar and what makes them similar and which, how is the third one uh, being differentiated from the other two. So as you can see, there's structure here. Um, and there's no value judgment. So we're not asking them, you know, what's most important to you, what's driving your decision making. We're going to get that from this implicit measure of just seeing how they're naturally categorizing. And of course, you, we can see here that it is completely open-ended. There's a ton of different ways that they can put these together uh, based on what attributes are important to them. Once we figure out what's, what that, that attribute set is by you know, giving them a bunch of these triplets, so those three products we call triplets, we give them sets of those to elicit a set of attributes. We then ask them to explicitly tell us which one of those are important, but we pair that with an implicit measure of importance, and that we get by just analyzing how often did an attribute come up and how quickly did it come up. Once we know what's important to them, we then get them to benchmark 
how is your product faring on these attributes compared with competitors and compared with an ideal. And this allows us to say, how are we performing, how, how are you performing um, relative to competitors and often times also uh, highlights where the white space is. Once consumers are completed with this task, the output that we get is this grid. We essentially have a list of attributes that are important relative to your product, and we know how you're delivering or not on those attributes. So once we're able to plot importance versus what the attributes are, we can give you a really principled uh, understanding of where to invest your marketing dollars. We have successfully applied this with uh, a bunch of clients in different industries. And again, I think the reason that we're able to apply it so broadly is because at some point, it doesn't matter what sector or what the product is, you're going to be faced with this question of figuring out what is the value proposition of your offering. Thank you. Did I make it? Okay.